In this video, we're going to talk about managed care. Um, you might be familiar with it. It's pretty popular in the United States. So for most, for a lot of the 20th century, up until the 1990s, we didn't really have managed, um, 1980s, we really didn't have managed care. Everything was fee for service. So you go to the doctor, they do something, they bill the insurance and they get paid back for it. They didn't really deny anything, even things that were expensive and not that beneficial. Um, and it really didn't do anything to contain moral hazard. And there was a lot of like um, room for physician-induced demand. So then Kaiser Permanente comes around and it began as a communal insurance pool for workers in the California shipyard for World War II. And then as the, um, the war kind of dwindled down. But okay, so during that part though, he um, realized that it'd be a lot cheaper to just hire doctors and open his own hospitals and have his employees go there instead of reimbursing doctors and hospitals wherever they decided to go. So it was the introduction of this kind of integration between insurance companies and healthcare provision. And also just... Um, those kinds of business strategies for minimizing uh, the costs of, of, of delivering healthcare. So people started to take note at how much money he was saving. And as the war dwindled down, that was when they shifted from building shipyards to being of a um, healthcare service delivery organization. So what is managed care? It is not specific to that Kaiser Permanente model that I described. It's kind of more broadly when insurance is um, oriented to uh, employing tactics to reduce moral hazard and physician-induced demand and lower premiums because it's lowering overall expected medical costs. And there are different kinds of tactics that they can employ. Gatekeeping, like we've talked about, where you need a referral to see a specialist. Um, vertical integration, where you can only see certain providers um, or narrower coverage networks, where you can only see certain providers, but they're not necessarily directly employed by the insurance company. Um, monitoring, like monitoring doctors and hospitals for their costs and health outcomes. Um, kind of capitated coverage, meaning that they are paying uh, providers per person to cover a particular individual um, or a particular, um, let's say, admittance to the hospital based on your condition. So prospective payment systems and denials of coverage. They might not cover every kind of healthcare service that is offered. So managed care is when insurance, like a kind of insurance that employs these tactics. Um, it, in 1973, federal law started to kind of react to this new thing that was entering into the market and uses this term health maintenance organization, HMO. That's for the more restrictive kind of vertically integrated uh, managed care organizations like Kaiser Permanente. PPO, preferred provider organization, is the less restrictive version. So they have certain providers that they prefer. They don't necessarily say that you can only go to like the company doctor. So a PPO is less restrictive. Um, the U.S. has kind of migrated towards those HMOs and PPOs for the most part, instead of just the completely broadband uh, fee-for-service models. So does managed care work? In general, they're not finding that there's much of a difference in terms of health outcomes. So I think like when they say health maintenance organization, what they mean is that like, we're not going to make you sicker, you know, like we'll maintain your health where it's at. <laughs> so they don't find any systematic, not necessarily intention of like improving your health, uh, or it, it's not focused on, on that, um, as, as a healthcare delivery system. Um, but they don't find systematic health outcomes differences. So it's not any better. It's not any worse on average. It can be worse for more vulnerable populations, poor, sick, disabled peoples who aren't able to jump through all of the different hoops uh, or tactics that the managed care organization is putting in place to reduce moral hazard. They, they are more likely to get caught up in those strings. Um, but they do, so in health outcomes, you know, on average, no difference except for those that are more vulnerable. In terms of saving money, on average, it does. They they pay providers less. Um, 
They use less, more expensive technologies like MRI machines. They are hospitalized less often, and they undergo fewer expensive tests, patients who have managed care coverage. So it does save money. One important caveat in terms of it being able to save money is that it tends to attract healthier customers. Like if you think about it in Medicare, uh, Medicare has the opportunity to enroll in a private insurance, uh, it's a Medicare advantage where they use it, you know, managed care tactics. And the people who are able to sign up for that, you know, it requires a kind of, I mean, it's very difficult to uh, compare between health insurance policies and restrictions for any, but when you're talking about an aging population, they're only going to be those people who are kind of cognitively capable of signing up for managed care. So they spend less on average for each managed care enrollee, but they also tend to be healthier on average. So it, that mitigates the average you know, price savings, like when you look at it just at face value. Um, the same thing is true in Medicaid, actually. So Medicaid, some 70% nationwide of Medicaid beneficiaries are enrolled in a Medicaid managed care plan. Um, usually the, um, like the people who get Medicaid because of a disability are not on managed care, whereas people who get Medicaid specifically because of having a low income are relatively more likely to for the state to uh, administer their coverage through managed care. So it looks like it costs less, but they also are just healthier. Interesting side note, academic researchers who study managed care are less likely to enroll in managed care themselves, which I, I didn't know that until I read that in the textbook. Uh, but I myself do not like I don't want an insurance company to be kind of yanking me around. I usually get the most expensive coverage possible um, just because I, I just want to use all the care I can. Um, who knows?